all these things, they are, they are, they are not history. They are also the future. The general public is really concerned about it and maybe more concerned than for other more chemical pollution. So I think it is important to prove uh, whether there are effects, yes or no. We're talking in the UK about having new nuclear power stations. We still have a, a big ongoing waste problem. And, you know, it's, it's not an issue that's uh, going to go away for a very long time. Radioecology is the study of radioactive substances in the environment. So that's both uh, what kind of effects they have on different organisms and ecosystems, and also how radioactive substances spread in the environment and how they're taken up by organisms. So studying radioecology involves quite a lot of different types of work. It can involve uh, lab studies where you set up experiments to test maybe a hypothesis about what kind of effects radiation might have on organisms or uh, to, to see how much uh, radioactivity organisms might take up. Uh, it also involves a lot of field work, going out to contaminated areas, for example, and uh, measuring uh, radioactivity in the environment. It also involves sampling for monitoring purposes to see whether uh, radioactivity levels are diminishing or increasing. So it covers aspects of biology and chemistry and physics and maths. It's quite a multidisciplinary science, which is one of the things that makes it really interesting. In order to study radioecology, uh, we need quite a lot of different types of scientists. Biologists, ecologists, we need physicists, chemists uh, to understand what's going on in the, in the soils and the water, geologists, hydrologists, uh, mathematicians, physicists. So uh, radioecologists are quite a diverse bunch and they come from all kinds of different fields of science. I'm a metal chemist by background and I got asked to be involved in STAR by the radioecologists and CEH because they felt that, I, that my expertise, um, particularly in relating how the chemistry of metals, which includes metallic radionuclides of course, um, relates to their toxicity and how that could be taken forward into uh, improving risk assessment for radionuclides, particularly in the presence of metal co-contaminants. That there, uh, there is a huge concern in the population about uh, radiation and the effect of radiation on uh, humans, basically, but also on the environment. And we have seen that with Chernobyl and, and now with Fukushima. So, and we don't really know much about long-term effects of radiation on different species in the environment. So if we're going to make proper risk assessments, saying when it's safe and how much can we um, take of different radiation, we, we need to know more basically of what does radiation do to different organisms with different life cycles at different times and with the interactions of the other stresses that are there. So, so I think it's extremely important. It's necessary to provide uh, toxicological data for this uh, specific field and to, uh, to bring knowledge on, on this field and, and, and set up uh, regulation. Scientifically, I think it's exciting to, to know that what you are doing, what you are doing is uh, some, some way useful to try to, to give information on the risks and uh, uh, which uh, uh, protection uh, should be more, more efficient in the future to avoid the, the pollution, avoid the, the contamination. In the old times, when I was still working with, with heavy metals, um, I would say, yeah, I work on cadmium pollution. Uh, people said, ah, cadmium pollution. But now I said, I work on the effects of radiation on the environment. And everybody says, ah, oh, yeah, and then there is a discussion going on. As my grandmother once said when I told her why I like working, she said, well, nobody seems to not to care at your job. Mm -hmm. And I think that's an environment where everybody really cares and, and they're exciting about what they do. That's a huge reward to be able to work in such an environment. When a new project starts, uh, we are trying to find the best people working for that or people with the background knowledge. And sometimes we are in a situation that nobody knows anything about it and somebody must go and learn. Mm -hmm. Some people don't like it, but I'm, I'm like that. Mm -hmm. If there is something new, a new challenge, no background information, I, I really enjoy. Mm -hmm. It's like lifelong learning process. Um, yeah, I think also with, with our science we can, to some extent, also help people. We can, we can let them know, okay, what 
what can be the consequences of an accident like Chernobyl or Fukushima? Is there, is there really problems of living close to a um, uranium mining site? And, and that is really exciting, if, if, because you can, in a way, help people.